Hello, um, I'm Margaret Carney, Director of the International Museum of Dinnerware Design, and I want to thank you all for joining us. I know you have lots of choices. I saw some competing Zooms tonight that look pretty good. So thank you for being here uh, with us this evening. Um, I want to make a few announcements as usual, but uh, I'm really indebted to the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting our events since uh, our Zoom events since 2022. And this is our final Zoom event with the Ann Arbor District Library since uh, we are in the process of uh, literally uh, relocating to the Hudson Valley to Kingston. And so uh, we will either be doing our Zooms on our own, but they will resume. We always take the summer off, so they will resume in September. If you're here tonight and you're a member or not, you will get notification of the programming beginning in September. So it will continue. We will just miss doing it with the Ann Arbor District Library. Uh, they've been great partners with us on this uh, journey that we've been taking. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce John, except for I want to say something. We, Bill and I, my husband Bill Walker and I went out to uh, visit John a couple of weeks ago in New York City and we did some videotaping and then my husband Bill has edited that. So it's kind of a, an interview with John that we wanted to produce so we had like a permanent record that wasn't just questions and answers and a PowerPoint thing, but it actually has questions to do with uh, our topic tonight. And if you didn't notice, uh, we did a switcheroo on you, or I should say John did that for us. It was originally, it was going to talk about California pottery, and then it was switched to uh, pottery from East Liverpool that was not Fiesta. And, um, and now it's back to um, an East Coast collector who collects West Coast pottery. So you're going to learn about uh, uh, Catalina and Bauer and... Um, some other Brighton Laguna and some other things this evening. So uh, without further ado, I think I need Bill back here to get the video going. Um, we're gonna show the video. So yep, make your grand entrance here, dear. Uh, so. And this is about a half hour long. And then John will magically appear and answer questions. So the point of this is that we aren't gonna talk about that today. Right. We've advertised that we're gonna talk about Homer Laughlin, but we're not going to. It's gonna be such unusual Homer Laughlin. It's gonna be in California. <laughs> I thought we would do these bowls and then I will take them away. And then I would like to start with Durland Brayton's dinnerware. His yeah. name is Durland Brayton, B-R-A-Y-T-O-N. And he started a pottery company at Laguna Beach. Durland, D-U-R-L-A-N-D? L-I-N, Durland, D-U-R-L-I-N. Durland Brayton, B-R-A-Y-T-O-N. He started maybe 1930, 31, 32, making colored dinnerware. And the colored dinnerware he made, well, which, which I'm going to show you uh, some pieces of, looks like somebody took Fiesta into a, a, a kindergarten class and said, you can make stuff that looks like this. That's what his dinnerware looks like. So after we do these, and I'm these going to go are, back to break. These We're are Catalina, Catalina. Yeah, these are Catalina. And are these the ones that Durland Durlin Brayton? No, no. Durland Brayton has nothing to do with Catalina Island. Okay. The pottery companies. There was a Bauer was a pottery company that moved from Kentucky to Los Angeles. Uh, I think, and maybe sometime at the end of the 19th century. Uh, Durland Brayton came from the Midwest 
to Laguna Beach where he started making pottery. Uh, the Catalina people, they discovered clay that could be made into pottery on Catalina Island while they were building up uh, the island. You know, they were putting up buildings and things like that, and they found clay on the island to use, and they used that clay. Then, after they had used the clay and made some buildings, they got the idea to make pottery, and they started making it. And here is the only picture we know of that pottery company. So we're gonna we're gonna start with with uh, Dolan Brayton's colored dinnerware, which, it's, as far as uh, Bill Stern and I knew, is the earliest commercial pottery that, and it wasn't really commercial. He was really making it himself in his own. Uh, what do you call the ovens? Uh, kilns. Kilns, yeah, he was in his own kilns. Uh, then, then we're going to go to Bauer. Uh, Bauer was the next company that started making. They started making uh, big plates. Uh, what was Durland Brayton? Was it called Brighton Pottery? It was called Brighton Laguna. Oh, that's right. Laguna. So then we're gonna do we're gonna do uh What's after Bauer? We're gonna do Brayton Laguna and then we're gonna do Bauer and then we're going to do Catalina. That's what I have the most of and what I'm the most knowledgeable about. And uh then we're gonna do one final company that had a small sad history. Brayton, uh, Catalina was in business from 1927 to 1937, and they sold out to Franciscan, and Franciscan made Catalina pottery for another four or five years. Business for 10 years, Margaret. Catalina Island was in business for 10 years. But after five years, they got really unhappy with the fact they got a lot of co comments because the early pottery shipped easily. It also made colors that had great depth. When they switched, they, they, they began importing uh, clay from the mainland and the colors are just, they're, they're nothing like they were originally. These bowls are all the original colors. Uh, I mean, there were more colors than this, but anyway, what you can see in these is you can see the depth of the color. This uh, reddish orange one, is that radioactive? Is that a uranium glaze or? Yeah, okay. it's a uranium glaze. And so what is the date of the Catalina here? 20, 1927 to 37. These bowls were probably made about 1931. Really much better. So oh, there's a good example of the march. Oh, I like to that too. And is the orange one signed the same way? Yes. And did they always mark their pottery? Usually. This one is much harder to see. The irregular size of these uh, tumblers, how crudely they, this stuff was made. That one is not so crude, but. He did so much of the work himself.
Are these also Brighton the Laguna? This is all Brighton. So tell us about Brighton Laguna. Well, that, that was it. Doral and Brighton came from the Midwest, settled in uh, Laguna Beach, and started making pottery. Whether he went there to make pottery or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't want to. That gives you an idea. Wait. That's wrong. <laughs> so are these all early ones or uh most they well I mean I know it's a ten year period but No, no, no. The ten year period is Catalina. Oh see I'm already Yeah. You Here, are. flip over that one and I'll photograph you holding that this one. The one that looks like it was photogenic. Oh, that one says Laguna Pottery. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> that is interesting. Brayden had two different wives, and both of them worked with him in his, in his pottery factory. Uh, and eventually, he hired a bunch of other people to work for him, and they made figurines, and they made all kinds of things like that. They never made any, the only other thing they ever made uh, that was comparable in, in novelty to the dinnerware were some figurines that were made, that the guy made them. He was a wood carver and he carved them out of wood and then the pottery people made, 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 the, made the pottery pieces to look like wood. Do you have examples of those? Yeah. You're not interested in that, it's not dinnerware. Bauer, uh... So tell us about what we're looking at right now. You could buy one or two of them. You could buy whatever sizes you wanted. But this kind of illustrates how they fit inside one another. So, what do you call these things? Stacking stack sets. Stack sets. These, these two on the left are the early ones. Those are the early colors. Those eight colors. And then these here are the wartime colors during World War II. And these, these, as you can see, are a little taller than the others. Well, the black wasn't necessarily very popular. I don't know why they made it, but they did make it. Uh, so I hate to ask you to repeat this, but uh, could you mention about the, which colors were common and which were more rare? Yeah, the red-orange color, the yellow, the green, the medium green, and uh, the darkish blue. Those are the common colors in, in, in most of these dinnerwares, not only on the West Coast, but on, on, on uh, East Liverpool, too. Colored dinnerware, those were the four colors that everybody wanted. Uh, then, then Homer Laughlin added to that uh, the <coughs> this this uh, white color, which is not really white; it's really an off-white. And uh, and Homer Laughlin added turquoise, whereas Bauer added light blue. And so how long after Bauer had these did Homer Lachlan come up with their versions? Was it like instantaneous? Uh, 
coffee. It's, it's interesting. Sure. The guy who designed Fiesta, who was a, a class, a classic, classical uh, designer. He had designed stuff for Roseville and. Uh, so you're talking about Frederick Hurt and Reed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Reed was the guy. He had worked in California. Didn't so, he work for American and Caustic and stuff too? He worked for a whole bunch of different companies. Uh, eventually working uh, a lot for uh, Homer Laughlin. But my point is this. He was in California when somebody got the idea of doing colored dinnerware. See, he, Homer Laughlin advertised all over that they were the original colored dinnerware company, and it was a lie. <laughs> Bauer and Brayton and Catalina and maybe Pacific all were companies that were making colored dinnerware before, Catal before Fiesta. Fiesta was the company with the greatest distribution. They had terrific distribution. So I have a question related to the, the uh, radioactive orangey red color. Yeah. So the legend has it that uh, Fiesta quit that original color in 1942 because they needed the orangey red uranium for the atom bomb. Is that true? Did all the other companies, or they weren't even in, uh, were they not manufacturing anymore? Oh, they were still manufacturing. So Bauer went on from. Oh, sure. Those companies to... all. Uh, Bauer went on until, I think, into the 50s, and uh, Franciscan went on into the 60s or 70s. Uh, but they, did they all discontinue the uranium glaze? No. Because of the atom bomb? Uh, or is that... they, they, there, were, there was. They, they talked. Yes, they discontinued it during the war because it was wanted. They started making, making, they started making colors kind of like these colors. Not th this, this color and, and a khaki color. Uh, and, 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 and they made the orange again. Well, that one, that one is a mark. Are the older ones marked? I don't know. You're asking me an interesting question. Well, the lids aren't marked. <laughs> yeah, okay. Apparently not. Apparently none of them are marked. Did Bauer mark other pottery, though? Oh, yeah. Okay. That marked a lot of things. And what date would these be from? Like the earliest colors and... Well, the earliest colors are from the early 30s. These are the common colors uh, in all of these potteries. An, an orange, a yellow, a green, and a dark blue. The tall sugar, uh, I, I think, were made with the idea that they would be decorate on somebody's... Uh, Dining room table. What well, one says Bauer? Uh, this one says Bauer, Los Angeles. In in Bauer, uh, all the ringware looks like this. It's just it's just bigger. It goes up to like fifteen inches, but it's exactly the same pattern. And is that signed? Yeah, it is. Hard to see on these small plates. Oh, here's one that's better. This is Monterey, Bauer Monterey. Are all three of the pieces Bauer Monterey? Uh-huh. And how do you differentiate? The one doesn't have rings, but the other ones do. 
And you said, the one isn't ringware. No. This one we're looking at, Monterey, is not ringware. But it has rings on it. And when were, were these made? 40s, 50s. I fell in love with it in the 70s when a lot of other people did too. That's Fiesta. Uh, you could buy it all over the country. It was, it was having its recirculation, you know. Fiesta was. So I started buying Fiesta, and then I started buying some other stuff from uh, other stuff from East Liverpool. So tell me why you started collecting Bauer. Well, I had a couple of friends really great friends of mine that lived out in New Jersey and uh, sold pottery uh, and various other things. Uh, and one day they got a fabulous set of Bauer that, uh, you know, had, had all different kinds of pieces and all different kinds of colors and uh, they said to me, why don't you buy it? And I said, I'm not collecting anything west of the Mississippi River. That's it. I might go as far as Minnesota, but I'm not going any further. Uh, and when was this? 50, 80s. Yeah. So uh, I looked at this set and I thought it's really beautiful. And it had one of those stack sets too. Uh, and I said it's really beautiful, but I just, I just don't want to start buying something else. So I turned it down. And that, I, that, I, that, that year, in that era, I was working in an art, art store on Christopher Street in, in Greenwich Village. And one of my friends rented the shop next door for a month to sell stuff for Christmas. And he had a partial set of service for six in Catalina. He had like three cups and six saucers and three bread and butter plates and four luncheon plates and five bowls, five, you know, little fruit bowls. And uh, I kept looking at it all during the Christmas vacation. And because uh, the colors were so stunning. It came the end of December and my friend is packing up and going home. And, and, and I buy the set from him. I buy it and I put it in that room in the corner and I never think about it again until I'm reading the, the, the days, the pottery newspaper that my friend Joe Cunningham is running from uh, Missouri and there is an, a, a review of a book by a guy in California named Fridley, who has written a book about Catalina Potter. So I immediately send for it. And when I get the book, I take my Catalina out and look at it and decide I'm going to collect it. From there, it was not a long jump until I began collecting Bauer, too. Uh, and when I heard about it, the Brayton Laguna stuff, one morning, do you know who Jack Chipman is? Yes. Okay, one morning Jack Chipman and I 
uh, were at the Rose Bowl. It's, it's the second Sunday, I think, of every month. Uh, we're at the Rose Bowl, and Jack came up to me and he said, John, if you want some Brayton Laguna, there's a guy over there has a whole bunch of it. It's not going to last very long because all the dealers are circling around. And I ran over there and grabbed it and bought this big lot of it. And I was so worried about it that I wrapped it up and carried it on the airplane. <laughs> and that was how. And a couple of other times I got bunches of, of Brayton Laguna. But basically, uh, you, did, you don't find it very often. I mean, there's not that much of it compared to Bauer and Catalina. But uh, Why is it that there, is it just the short amount of time or how early it was or? Well, I think the fact that, that he was chipped? basically <laughs> making it by, making it himself and had other people in there who were helping him make it, but they were all kind of, it was semi handmade. And, and that's why I don't think there was very much of it. Uh, and nobody ever talked about Derlin Brayton. Now, you know, he's, Brayton Laguna is always on eBay, and you can find it, and sometimes you find the dinnerware. And what are we looking at right now? This is a Padre pitcher and, and tumblers. When Bill did his show, which he did his book from, he, he, he used that picture. And uh, my friend Steve and I begged him to take the tumblers, because I think the tumblers make the picture even more wonderful. They kind of tell the whole story. I, th I feel that, but are, he didn't think so. Are they Mark Padre? The tumble that tumbler isn't I don't <laughs> And what's the story behind This one is marked Padre. And what's the story behind Padre? Padre was a company that went into business I don't know, around nineteen thirty eight, thirty nine, forty in Los Angeles. Uh, and they were making stuff for about five years and then they had a fire and they went out of business and they never went back into business. That was the end of Padre. But they made some interesting things and they did, they copied a lot of Catalina stuff because Catalina of course had gone out of business. Anyway, this is Padre. Those are Catalina. And what time period are they from? Uh, mid thirties, maybe earlyish thirties. Uh, I don't really. I think most of them are dark clay, which means they were made, you know, before nineteen thirty-four or five. There are eight colors there, aren't there, Margaret? Yes, there are. Yeah, th those are their eight colors. Six regular colors and two art colors. So these are Catalina. Those are Catalina. And what time period are they from? Uh, Mid-30s. I have two copies of this, which when I find the second copy, I will give it to you. Uh, but anyway, there's we, a... We want to have a good reference library at the yeah, museum. Yeah, you should so have a good reference. We have a, we have a lot of books about dinnerware and ceramics and flatware and things, but we don't have much about California pottery. Isn't that so. funny? Well, we never owned any until Bill Stern, some 300-some pieces came to us. So we never had any. This is, this is an early piece, and it's, it's very... It's, it's much larger than anything, than almost anything else they made. They made a few vases that are pretty big. Uh, but this is the biggest dinnerware item they made. Why don't you put your hand over by it so we can see how big it is. That's something for comparison. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> is that like a... 
Okay. A foot and a half. So tell us about Catalina pottery, or do you want to show us something else uh, to talk about the history or whatever? Is? Well, the really important thing, which is what I was telling you earlier, is that in the middle of the decade of being in business, they switched from dark clay to light clay, which was brought in from the, from the mainland. And it really took away the vibrant colors that they had, which came as a result of the dark clay. And that dark, <coughs> that dark clay was brittle, and it chipped easily, as you can see, this piece has chips. Uh, but there's no comparison between the depth of the colors and the vibrancy of them uh, with the early clay. So that's what happened to them. But they did a lot of stuff while they, during their 10 years. <laughs> okay, tell us about the Trojan teapot, John. The Trojan teapot is a late teapot, probably made 35, 36, 37 in that time. And who was that? And it's always on white clay. So that way you know it's late. And who was the manufacturer? Catalina. And what do other people call it? If they don't call it the Trojan teapot? No, they call uh, the teapot that matches that sugar bowl down there, uh, right behind you. There's a brown sugar bowl sitting on a blue plate, a little blue plate. You see it right there? Mm -hmm. That's the one, that's what they call the, that's, that's a very early sugar bowl. And uh, over, the, over their 10 years, they probably made at least five different teapots. They made a lot of creamers and sugars. Oh, and who knows who designed it? I have no idea. So um, there are some questions in the chat, and we're going to get John back on here. So John, uh -oh. you're on, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. And so there you can see some more Catalina over my shoulder. There's two other teapots. I like looking at those. So part of the problem is that some of the chat questions were the fact that people couldn't hear the video. <laughs> yeah. so, so we got more questions about that than uh, than uh, sincere yeah. questions about everything. So John, of all the things that you've shown, do you have a favorite among California pottery that Bauer and Catalina and Bright and Laguna, do you have a favorite? Well, I tend to like the earlier stuff that everybody made. Uh, uh, with Catalina, it's 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 obvious because the colors are so much more bright, vibrant. Uh, but the colors are are better in early Fiesta, and the colors are better in early Bauer. And Bauer, uh, the raspberry color that I showed you in the Bauer stack set. Uh, eventually became a dark burgundy color later on, and that color is not nearly as aesthetically pleasing to me as the earlier version. Uh, I like, and I like, I like, I like the big pieces. That big bowl that I have that's chipped, you know, uh, it's the only one I've ever seen, and it's such a large piece and. All of these companies started out making fairly, including the East Liverpool ones, they started out making fairly large items and then the items got smaller as their production went on. I, I don't quite know why, but maybe because the dealers said they were hard, harder to manage, I don't really know. 
So I, I love the Trojan set. I think yep. when, when I came a year ago to your apartment, I think I took a photograph of that, but I didn't mentally write down what it was that I'd seen. But when I saw it again, I was going, yeah, that's the one I, I totally fixated on. So this is a, an unreal, I don't mean to hog the questions, but I will for just a minute. So if you were gonna talk about uh, unusual East Liverpool pottery sometime with us, what would you, not to get off the subject here, but what would it be if you weren't showing Fiesta, which you said you weren't gonna show, what unusual East Liverpool pottery would you talk about? Well, all of these companies, in, in, uh, including Vernon Kills in California, made Mexican decal dinnerware. And I would talk about uh, Homer Lachlan, who made Fiesta, had great success with their Mexican decal lines. They made four or five different ones. <clears throat> the most common one was called Mexicana. And then there was one called Hacienda and one called Conchita and one called Arizona uh, and, and so on. But I find those very interesting. And Homer Loughlin made a lot of kitchen crafts, stuff they called kitchen craft. Fiesta Kitchen Craft came in the first four Fiesta colors. Uh, there was no ivory and there was no turquoise, just the original four, the orange, the yellow, the blue, the green. Uh, but then they made a whole decal line of the same pieces. And I have a lot of those. And those are kind of like fun to look at. And uh, also the various shapes they did. They did a stack set, uh, just just like uh, Bauer had done. Probably copied it from Bauer. Mean of me to say that, but I think that's probably true. Anyway, there, there's there's a mixing bowl set. There are covered pitchers. Uh, what else is there? Uh, there are stack sets. The stack sets are really hard to find. And uh, so that's, that's, that's the stuff that interests me. And uh, I just got sick of Fiesta. <laughs> so I mean, after you've got one of everything, you don't need more. So a question, um, does a lot of California dinnerware show up? Um, on the East Coast or New York no. City? No. Were, were no. Were the companies Brighton Laguna, Catalina, and Bauer ever sold in the major city department stores? Uh, Brighton was sold in some of the de some of the department stores, uh, uh, like a uh, what am I? Like a salad set, you know, with uh, colored bowls and a and a large center bowl. Uh, things like that were sold in department stores in New York. I don't know, probably sold, you know, also in places like Marshall Fields in Chicago, but not not for an extended period of time. Uh, and things like uh, Fiesta were never sold in high class department stores, at least not in New York. So That's interesting. It, was there a problem too? Because we're, we're talking some of it's depression era. So would that have been a problem with marketing uh, of some of the California pottery? I don't think so because the Cal, well, I, I mean, the shipping would have added a, a, a fair amount to the cost of selling it. But I, I think I think because companies like Homer Laughlin had such great distribution, there wasn't any really any really any need for for the California stuff, which overlapped Fiesta by a great deal. So how how much of the Padre uh, pieces? How much of that is out there? Because I've never seen them before. I saw yours. 
not a lot because they were only in business for you know like six or eight years uh and uh but but you can find padre on ebay mm -hmm. as you can find brayton laguna and you can find a lot of brayton laguna's figurines on ebay uh a lot of bauer Cal catalina is one of the few brands whose prices have held up pretty well through this transition into the 21st century, which has really knocked the hell out of the market value for most colored dinnerware, including including uh, Russell Wright. Are, are you familiar with the Denoir Pottery Studio in Costa Mesa? They later transitioned into, into textiles. No. 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 Well, that's the answer for that question. <laughs> so um, you talked about how you got interested in Fiesta. How did you start collecting uh, dinnerware? Or, or was Fiesta the, the first that you were interested in? You know, it's interesting. In 1952, I lived in Paris and I had almost no money. I was living on the 5220 Club, which is the the, the the army gave you fifty dollars a month, but fifty dollars a month went a long way in 1952. I'm not knocking it, but I started collecting the some, something called the faience de Gien, which is pottery that was made in Gien, and I bought two sets. I don't know how I ever saved up enough money, but I bought two sets of that and brought it back on the boat with me to the United States. <laughs> you still and have that? Much as, I, much as I treasured it, when I got back, I realized I hadn't brought brought anything for my, for my parents or for my roommate's parents. So I had to give both sets away. <laughs> oh. But it, what that shows is that at a very early age, I, I was interested in dinnerware. God knows why. I don't. Yeah, well, you're talking to the, all the people preaching to the choir here. All the people that love dinnerware. So, well, another yeah. question. Are you? Are you know. still? I don't collecting? know how many of them know how how they got to fall in love with it either. He's asking you whether you're still collecting it. And I distinctly remember a year ago when I visited you. You had some things that you were just unwrapping. I think they were the one of the mexican lines the homer lachlan or something yes i have i have this unopened box right now and this <laughs> is a, a uh this is a mexican decal rolling pin oh yay <laughs> may made by a company in uh east liverpool and um, the one that i had before when i went through all this stuff looking for things to show you uh i found it was broken and when i saw it on ebay i thought you know it's just a lot of money but i'm buying it <laughs> but you know i haven't worked up the courage to unwrap it <laughs> Uh, we have a, a comment in the chat that says I could unwrap I it. Right, I, could, I could unwrap it right now and show it to you. Yeah, there's somebody here who wants wants it unwrapped. Oh, it's a friend yeah. of yours. <laughs> a friend of yours who will remain nameless uh, wants it to see it unwrapped. Who's that? Scott Vermillion. Ah. <laughs> I tell names. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. So I'm everybody not... here that collects knows whatever it is that you're collecting. Hopefully, it's dinnerware, but that you know the fever of it, and I gotta have it, and I'll pay any price. <laughs> so, do we have other questions while we're waiting for John to unwrap? Well, there's a comment. Uh, thank you for this presentation. I'm a California native, and I find it. East Coast collector's passion for our California pottery so interesting, and his knowledge just wonderful. Uh, 
They're flattering you, well, John. I, just you know, just have, because they I called have, you a legend. <laughs> I have friends in Los Angeles who really know much more than I do, like my friend Sandy Putnam on, on Catalina Island. She knows more about Catalina pottery than anybody I know, including all the people who write the books. <laughs> but she's a fourth, gen a fourth generation, third or fourth generation here. Oh, oh all wow. right. Oh, that's lovely. Ah. It's, I, I think it's stunning, but that is stunning. I mean, you have to be hot for dinnerware before you're going to think a ceramic rolling pin is stunning. Ah. <laughs> but you got me to it, it's in it's in stunning condition too, which makes me very happy. I am planning to divest myself of most of my collection. I'm going to send my California stuff to California. I have a couple of people who've offered to come and drive it away. And uh, there is a uh, an auction house in Indiana called Strouser. And I am hoping that he will take most of the Homer Laughlin stuff that I have. If he won't, I guess I'll put it on eBay. Well, you could always give it to the dinnerware museum, you know, John. Oh, please, you don't want all of that. <laughs> I mean, I, I give you a few pieces. You don't need, you don't need what I've got. <laughs> a few pieces we'd gladly accept. You'd be following okay. Bill Stern. Bill Stern's part of his collection coming to us. So, so thank you. Does anybody else have any questions that you either want to put in the chat or raise your hands and ask John? Um, there's a, another question here. Okay. Has there been much discussion on the role of the good neighbor policy in 1933 um, had on the Mexican themed dinnerware? Well, in relation to dinnerware? Yes. I, I don't, I don't know of any, I don't remember seeing any dinnerware that came from South America in that period when I was going to high school. Uh, but you might be interested to know that I live in New York, in Manhattan, on 6th Avenue. 6th Avenue was renamed in honor of the good neighbor policy, Avenue of the Americas. And every sign says 6th Avenue, Avenue of the Americas. And there are statues of the most famous people in, in the various South American countries up and down 6th Avenue. Well, you have lots of, uh, lots of good information for us. Not just well, your birth date, because you were born on a famous day too. <laughs> that's right. I was born on a famous, it took me a long time to realize that, it, but I was born on a famous day. So does anybody else have questions for John while we have him here before we thank him and thank you all for attending? Somebody wants to know who made the rolling pin. Metlocks. Metlocks? Yes. And and that's that's their Mexican decal, which they called Monterey, that 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 guy with his burrow. Huh. We've all learned something. <laughs> any more questions? I don't see any more. Well, John, we're going to thank you very much for this evening and your expertise and sharing your collection with us. And uh, otherwise, I'd just keep you here all evening and ask you to tell me what's in every single crate behind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we might we might do the the decaled Homer Laughlin stuff sometime because. That's not widely collected. That's a great idea. Everybody can uh, email and let us know if you like that idea. So yes. we're going to wrap this up this evening. Yeah. And, and also, also, I also have uh, 
the Mexican decal stuff that other East Liverpool potteries companies make, like the rolling pin I just showed you. And uh, the, I have several other collections like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you all for being so patient. Thank you, everybody. We'll we'll see you in September in Kingston, New York. Oh uh, yes. Thank you. We're gonna say good night now. Bye. <laughs>